and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple. Some of you may see may have seen him on Big Dice Panel 4. Some of you may have seen him the original time I had him on back way back in 2019. And he and now he is back with the declassified version of his Titan Effect role-playing game. The one and only Christian Nome. How you doing today, man? Hi. I'm fine and you. I am do I am doing good. Uh oh. Old Man Winter may may have fi may have finally left, for now. I say for now because I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, we had it. We had that talk. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for thank you for coming back, and thank you for um, dealing with my time zone juggling. Always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. So. As so, we've the last time that I've the times that I've had you on, we've talked about some of the early days with Titan Effect, and in the interim, I've brought in the guy um, doing Infusion because I ended up finding out about him shortly after I met you. Yes. Um. <clears throat> now, as I understand it, declass the classified edition is essentially. Would it be fair of me to say that it is a proper upgrade to catch it up with um, Suede? Because it, um, Suede had come out very shortly after you launched the original edition of Titan Effect. Yes, correct. And you had a conversion kit, but when when Suede had come out, had you pl had you planned from the get go to do to do a full on up to do a full on update? Or was it something that you thought originally that just the conversion would be fine until you realized that it w that suede was a bit more extensive? No, at first I was thinking about making an update. Uh, mm -hmm. I released the, the conversion guide uh, before, but uh, I was uh, thinking about making the update. But when I learned that uh, Pinnacle was working on the new Superpowers Companion, I put that on hold because I didn't want to, uh, you know, the same thing. I didn't want the same thing to happen to me when I released the first edition. Mm -hmm. So I decided to wait. Unfortunately, I had to wait uh, <laughs> quite some time before because it was only uh, last year that Pinnacle finally announced uh, the new Superpowers Companion. Mm -hmm. So uh, I only started to work on the the new edition for Titan Effect at that time. And uh, I quickly realized that uh, that's, that it was going to be a much bigger job than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to, in, instead of just making an update, uh, doing some sort of uh, new edition. So uh, I added uh, more art, uh, a new short comic book as an introduction, a new adventure. Mm -hmm. I added some of the extra stuff that I uh, released for free uh, for the first edition, like the Spear Unit Guides. That That's basically uh, a Company ID uh, guide. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's fully integrated in the in the classified. Mm -hmm. And there was a beta version of uh, more an alpha version of the rules to play uh, by augmented soldiers that I released the last summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I integrated all that in, in Declassified, and I also wanted to polish it a bit more, so I hired a new editor, John Stevens, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, help me uh, make the writing. Because, uh, you know, English is not my, uh, my first language, and uh, I, uh, you know, as a French uh, writer writing in English, uh, I use a lot of passive voice. Uh, I make quite a few mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, which is funny because uh, no one complained about that uh, in the three years uh, while Titan Effect was uh, since Titan Effect was released. But uh, I decided to improve it anyway. And 
now I think the, the writing is much better. And uh, with the help of John, I think now uh, Declassified Edition is the, the definitive version that I wanted to do for Titan Mm-hmm. And with that in with that in mind, given given the um, given the nature of the of of going alongside the the um, superpower companion, I know I asked this last time, but I think it bears noting since new edition and all that is Titan Effect still still um, viable on its on its own, or is it re- or do you or do you recommend people? Have the superpower companion along with it. No, I, I recommend. Uh, I highly recommend to have the superpower companion. I released a new uh, alternate rules uh, guide for people who just have Savage Worlds for rules, but uh, it limits uh, a bit the game because uh, it, it doesn't. This version doesn't include the the option to play by augmented soldiers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eventually, it may happen, but uh, it was uh, too much of a, of a headache to find a way to make it work for for this uh, alternate option. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you want a full experience, uh, go with Super Powers Companion because uh, it uh, it works better that way. Mm-hmm. And e- even with that, I do see that there's still the um, suggestion list for e- for each of the four. Branches of, um, of psychic power. Sure. And it's still here. Yeah. And of course, the other thing, the other thing that I I couldn't help but notice, and I think I I think I brought this up when I looked at the cover art for Declassified Edition, is I ended for whatever reason I ended up getting very strong vibes of the original art for Shadowrun First Edition. Yes. Was that was that something that you um, brought up as a reference to the to the artist when getting that set up? Absolutely. I I I, I give them a, a lot of different references, but uh, one of the, the the vibe that I wanted was that uh, the one that was on, on that cover of Shadowrun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a long history of Shadowrun because. It's the second RPG that I played after Star Wars, and uh, I played quite a few years. Uh, I played the first edition, second edition. I stopped with the third, the third edition. But it's a it's a game that uh, influenced me a lot. Mm-hmm. I thought it was, uh, uh, you know, a way to pay tribute to, uh, to uh, what I think is a, a good game. And of course, something some something that I remember really liking in the original, and I still like with the declassified edition, is the way you've utilized hyperlinks. You know, still going for that whole, still going for that whole um, tablet like fe- tablet like feel, which even to this day I still don't see many um, people do that. It's a shame because it's quite simple to put in place, honestly. Mm-hmm. Because I only uh, I only use hyperlinks. I don't use any uh, interactive buttons or code in JavaScript or that kind of stuff because it can be messy uh, according to the read the kind of reader you use. With hyperlinks, you can you know any PDF reader will work. Tablet, phones, uh, you can even use it when you're. Uh, PDF internet browser. Mm-hmm. And I know in the additional rules thing, you have that list of ba- of banned powers, and I'd like to I'd like to pick your brain on that on that for a moment. Not in ter- not in terms of the full banned power list that would be redundant, but rather, what was your de- what was your deciding fa- what's your deciding factor or guideline? On whether or not a existing power would um not would not count for Titan effect. Well, Titan effect uh, has always been uh, kind of grounded compared to uh, to most superheroes uh, settings. Mm-hmm. So uh, any powers that felt you know like 
too much or you know too stretch out i decided simply to forbid them because it wouldn't work with titan ethic for example teleportation was something well teleportation can can be kind of game breaking mm -hmm. so i think for the game master it's a benediction that uh, <laughs> it isn't allowed in titan effect Mm -hmm. But uh, there's other powers like uh, the ability to clone yourself uh, in Titan Effect that in the with a background that would have made a lot of sense. So all these powers that felt too much or didn't fit the setting, uh, I just decided to discard them. Of course, if Game Master wants to use them for his own campaign, that's uh, that's on him. Mm -hmm. And. With that, with that, with that in with that in mind, we're from shifting from OG to declassified. Were there any any rule any rules in particular that were in or that were in the original that, um, for one reason or another, just weren't just weren't going to fit the way Swade was working? Yeah. Uh, well, one of the first that uh, I had to discard was uh, Psychic Surge was a setting rule uh, in the first edition. Mm -hmm. uh, be, it was a rule allowing uh, someone to push his uh, his powers to the beyond the limit beyond his limits. Mm -hmm. So you could for a temporarily gain a few uh, levels or four points to have uh, to increase the effect of your power or make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. but at the cost of uh, a fatigue level. And with the new superpowers companion, they kind of added a new setting rule that basically is the same thing, but it's all different. Mm -hmm. So I had, I had to remove Psychic Surge for, uh, for that reason. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few hand hindrances that I had to remove because the, with Swade, the they made you uh, hindrances that were like either they were like the one I, I created or they were quite similar. Mm -hmm. There was uh, amnesia, uh, impulsivity. Mm -hmm. So uh, both of them had to uh, go uh, and declassified because uh, I wasn't going to have uh, the same uh, hindrances uh, twice. Mm -hmm. But no. uh, oh, besides that, uh, so that's the only things that, uh, that I had to remove. Mm -hmm. And taking taking that in, taking that into into a, into account, um, something else something else, of course, I had noted is that. A lot of the a lot of the setting material, whether it be whether it be be um, spear or the organizations that sp that have been influenced by the by the proliferation of of psychic powers, um, it's largely the same as it was in the original, and there was there was there ever was there ever consideration to do some sort of advancing the story kind of deal because i've seen i've seen some games do that do that kind of thing with sometimes to, sometimes for better and sometimes for worse between editions and obviously there's the whole there's certain elements that Shadowrun has done in that sense yeah no the the only thing that i did for the to uh, redid the text to make it uh, flow better uh, and reduce passive voice uh, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's more or less the same thing. Uh, the only difference is there's a, uh, there's a paragraph about the about Keller's legacy, uh, which is uh, some kind of a secret formula that uh, uh, a lot of faction or after you, know, it's like some sort of a, of Super MacGuffin, and uh, in the original version, there was uh, it was really a small paragraph, and now it's uh, we uh, explain uh, a bit better what it is and how the game master can use it. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, the, the background is the is the same. 
Mm-hmm. We didn't see any reason to change it because we're happy uh, as it is, and uh, we're gonna expand it with uh, the future uh, campaign source book. And with the with that in mind, since you you mentioned a few times about passive voice, um, I'd like you to go I'd like you to go into what you mean by that and how that affected. Um, the writing for OG Titan Effect, and uh, and how you tried to change that for Declassified. Well, it's difficult to explain because uh, the passive voice is my editor who highlighted it uh, in our uh, first talk mm-hmm. about how to improve uh, the text. And uh, when, I, when I see is all his edits and updates. Uh, I managed to see the a few uh, a few changes. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, you know some uh, how to explain. There was passive voice and there was also expressions that we use in French, and you know I tried to translate it in English, but uh, it wasn't the, the right way to do it. So uh, with the help of John, we managed to uh, to change that in the in the text. Mm-hmm. But I think someone who most people won't really pay attention, but I think someone who really reads thoroughly the the background in the first edition and who read it read the classified right after will manage to to see these uh, changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm. Reminded, I'm reminded of the old adage: "An artist is their own worst critic." <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> I, uh, I'm certainly gu- guilty of that. Mm-hmm. And now, when it com- when it comes to the, when it comes to the when it comes to the rules of um, of suede versus the versus what you want to do with the rules, were there? Were there any instances where what's where what Swade what Swade's um, core rules are came into conflict with what you wanted to do? Uh, I think the biggest conflict that I had was for the uh, the armor rules uh, because in Swade the Kevlar vests uh, are treated differently, like most other armors. Uh, and uh, it's a, uh, it's kind of the, it's something similar that there was in previous edition of Savage Worlds. And, uh, for me, what's something that was that added complexity uh, for, you know, that for me didn't work. And for Titan Effect, I wanted to have something more, uh, you know, more streamlined. Uh, you know, try to avoid confusion as possible. So. I removed the special uh, the special rules uh, that were in Swade for Titan Effect. Mm. Like uh, you, you have an armor, whether it's a Kevlar vest or any other kind of armor, you know, it gives you a certain amount of protection. And uh, you know, whether someone shoots you with a a gun or a knife, it uh, it doesn't change anything. With the exception, if someone is used armor pressing round. In that case, it reduces uh, the armor. No, mm-hmm. sorry, I have uh, kids uh, crying uh, in the back. No worries. You you know by now <laughs> that I don't ever pretend to be a professional podcaster. <laughs> yeah, I have my uh, little girl who's four years old, and uh, it's a difficult age. Mm-hmm. Now, with that in mi- with that in mind. Um, since to, since some of the new setting rules that Titan Effect has in, are in regard to demolition and hacking, um, I think I, I'd like to fo- I'd like to focus a bit on the hacking thing because you're probably as familiar with the hacking problem that most cyberpunk games end up running into. Oh yes. <laughs> um. For those un- for those unaware, the pr- the problem that the problem is what is what I call the sit on hands affair, where you ha- where um, hacking is this involved thing that's almost that, because of the fact 
that a party is usually going to be composed of one person being the hacker designated so. That when it comes to hacking, ev they're pl they're playing a duet game of go of going into of going into the system while everybody else is just sitting on their hands. Um, I'd say this was that it's I'd say the absolute nadir of this kind of issue was um, Shadowrun Third Edition because they yeah. decided to have different level different types of initiative and different types of and different types of action economy for hackers or for mages within the astral plane that was completely divorced from everybody else so it's one of those things that's always trick it's always tricky and you of course have your have your own take and given that given that i'm guessing that one of the goals that you had with um, your take on hacking is to make it so that there isn't one person designated as the hacker. That it's something that just any any spear agent can dip into. Yes. Well, in the same time, you know, in most uh, spy spy movies or, or fiction, uh, you know, the hacking uh, isn't something that uh, you know that takes uh, a lot of place, mm -hmm. with some exception. And uh, you know, I know how uh, how I was frustrated when I was playing Shadowrun, and there was someone playing the the hacker, and uh, we had to to wait for uh, you know minutes or hours before it was finished, and uh, that's something that I didn't want to to have for Titan Effect. Besides, it wouldn't fit where uh, with Savage Worlds, in my opinion. It's it's the kind of th I. When I when I look at when I look at the way the way hacking is utilized in po in in the popular media that we grew up watching, the whole di the whole diving having someone dive in and out of cyberspace just to open up just to open a lock like that isn't isn't all that co isn't all that common. I'd say the no. that kind of mindset I is is something that you see in say. Um, Lawnmower Man or Johnny Mnemonic, not in say the Matrix. Even Ghost in the Shell, that's the closest that leans into that kind of thinking, and even that's a stretch. Yeah, but I won't go as far to tell that the hacking rules in Titan Effect are realistic. But I had a talk, had a lot of talk with uh, friends who work in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. and uh, they gave me advice, and you know share with me their experience about what they know about hacking. Mm -hmm. You realize that hacking is way more common than people think and way quicker <laughs> than what people believe. You know, it's not someone typing on the keyboard for hours to, to write a code. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that, that was the, the feeling that I was trying to recreate with uh, this, uh, this simple rule. Mm-hmm. And because because of because of that, you can. Ha I think the other. Th I get the feeling the other thing you wanted to avoid is the is that idea of the hacker who's st who's staying put way far off in a tr in a truck or in or in a or in a base. Yeah, exactly. Because it's hard for them to really interact with the rest of the crew, and an RPG is supposed to be a party based game. Yeah, and it's not fun, you know, for uh, someone who plays a hacker in, in that kind of game where, uh, you know, once you you've done your hacking, you just use this for the rest of the, for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's uh, for me a boring way to, uh, to play uh, an RPG. Yeah, a lot of I'd say a lot of people when they think of ha when they think of um, how someone would do hacking in in a gaming sense. I would. I get the feeling a lot of people would use probably de probably Deus Ex as their po as their point of reference. Uh, you mean the was the that sort of uh, mini game that would use for uh, for the hacking? Not necessarily the mini game aspect, but in terms of what you're trying to do with it, you're tr yeah. you're trying to. It's not. It's not about messing around in an alternate world so much as you're trying to get something out of it. Exactly. 
whether that be mess with the security, whether that be making the bots attack each other so you don't have to fight them, or whether it be in something like System Shock where you're trying to get yourself free, a free lunch. <laughs> Yeah, there was a, also that uh, Ubisoft game, uh, Watch Dogs, when uh, mm -hmm. you uh, you had your your special smartphone that you could use for to hack almost anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of trying to recreate that uh, that feeling where hacking is something that you can do quickly mm -hmm. oh. and use it more efficiently and more creatively also. Yeah, Watch Dogs is something that should be better than what it is. Oh, I totally agree. Like, yes, there was the there was that little controversy with the with the announcement trailer, which is the reason why you see the in development thing. You can also blame Randy Pitchford for that. Oh, but just the just the fact that you have something that can, that can boast a heavy amount of freedom and. It it forces itself to com to conform to that UB box formula, which is why um, that cer that certain UX designer complaining about Elden Ring was so hilarious. Because <laughs> I know I because yeah. I know you saw that whole you saw that whole oh. thing where he was whining oh, yeah. about UX. I, I saw it. At, uh, uh, I laughed really loud when I read it the first time Cause, because uh, you know. L less is better. <laughs> yeah, and the reason people have been roasting Ubisoft games over an open fire is because of the fact that they keep adding this all this extra st this extra stuff. To and people had, when when that guy had made his complaint, people had um, photoshopped together a a um, look at what Elden Ring's UI would look like if Ubisoft developed it. I had a f I had a fun experience with that uh, when uh, I I played a lot of Elden Ring uh, mm -hmm. lately, and I started to play uh, also uh, Forbidden uh, Horizon uh, Forbidden West, mm -hmm. and the the game is really cool. But when I, after played so many hours of Elden Ring and returning to uh, Forbidden West, it hurts my eyes. Because there was so much information on on the screen when I was playing, uh, the the HUD was saturated, you know, by information mm -hmm. icons, and uh, I couldn't play more than five minutes. I had a headache after that. Yeah, and some people have brought up the fact that I that I've I've defended stuff like Ultima Underworld or System Shock and and this kind of thing, except. Those were made first off. Those were made by Looking Glass, who pioneered the whole immersive sim thing. And second off, those were very early takes on that concept. Exactly. Um, in fact, I, th I think Ultima Underworld came out around the same time as Wolfenstein 3D. And. It very much was still in. It was still in the mindset that you would see in a point-and-click style game. That and, that and it was using a that and it was using um, old as old as VGA style graphics. Meanwhile, Carmack said he could make a better a better texture mapper, which might be arrogant, except he did. <laughs> because, well, it's well, it's Carmack, the. I'm pr I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he go I'm pretty sure he was ha he was handing off co he was handing off code to de to developers when nobody was was looking just to see what would happen. <laughs> oh. that's that's possible, yes. That and this is the same guy who who uh, made improvised thermite to try and steal an Apple II when he when he was in school. Cuz yeah, that happened. But Get, but getting to the getting to the ma the matter at hand, um, when it came to, when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to trying to give people at say conventions or the like the elevator pitch of um, Titan Effect, how how do you how do you bring them into that without oh, without overwhelming them with some with some of the nuances with Spear and the like. 
Well, most people I approach, uh, especially, uh, uh, I started to try to, to pitch an animated series to, uh, to different producers and, uh, for uh, producers who don't know anything about tabletop RPGs, you have to keep things simple as possible. Mm -hmm. So with a world uh, complex as Titan Effect can be difficult. So I simply say, you know, it's like, uh, imagine if Jason Bourne had superpowers or could be a werewolf or, uh, you know, a mix of James Bond and the X-Men. So mm -hmm. th that's kind of references that people understand right away. Or if people are big nerds, uh, I simply say that it was heavily influenced by Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. um, so people get the picture uh, yeah. really quickly when I when I make these references. Now with now with one hundred percent less nano machines, son. No nano machines, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I could I couldn't help myself, <laughs> but even with. Even even with even with all of that, um, the other rule the other rule that you added what that's that um isn't directly in the in um in the in either the core or su or superpowers companion is the rules regarding demolition. Um, was it a case where you didn't want demolition to ju to just be a regular skill? Uh, well, I could, but I saw that, uh, you know, for a game, uh, with, uh, an emphasis on, uh, on, you know, covert missions like sabotage or that kind of thing, I saw that was a rule that people would be expecting. So, uh, I tried to, again, keep it simple as possible. And then the the version in declassified is a bit simplified compared to uh, in the previous version because uh, with Swade they added uh, you know a lot of uh, of new rules. Uh, for example, uh, there was a demolition skill now that I removed in uh, the classified because in Swade they use repair mm -hmm. also for demolition. So no, I tried to. Uh, respect suede as much as possible mm -hmm. uh you know i didn't try to reinvent the wheel or uh so i adapted uh, my, my setting to uh to this rule mm -hmm. there's a, a few differences but uh you know yeah and of course me for me personally i will i i appreciate the i will always appreciate the the um equipment point set up simply be simply because it's some it's that kind of that kind that kind of abstracted requisition is a little bit e a little bit easier for people to work to work around as opposed to having to assign a monetary value to anything yeah and i think it wouldn't make sense you know for a covert organization to uh, to lend money on their uh agents so they can buy uh, weapons or gear so the idea of the, the this abstract system with equipment points is that uh, you have a certain amount of equipment points mm -hmm. according to your rank because it also uh, it also tells the kind of mission that you do and all this character won't be in the same kind of danger uh, as a seasoned or veteran character so mm -hmm. you won't need the same kind of equipment. Yeah. And um, I'd be remiss if I didn't put if I didn't point out some of the other inspirations that you listed in the well inspirations chapter or better or better referred to as your version of Appendix N. Because um, there's there's a few there's a few that I, there's a few that I think would I think would be. Fam I think it would be familiar, and a few, th a few that might be left field out of based on the assumptions. Um, one of them that I think, I think some people might, I think some people might not expect as much that you listed is Witch Hunter Robin. You know, because that was far more of a supernatural work. Yes. Well, Witch Hunter Robin, you had this uh, 
discovered uh, agency hunting uh, witches that were more treated like psychics in Titan, I think, because mm -hmm. the, they weren't using uh, pentagrams or stuff like that, you know, that their powers were more innate, like, uh, like psychics and Titan, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, that's that's why that's one of the inspiration. Yeah, I, I got I got you on that. And well, when it comes to the island of Doctor Moreau, I hope to God you didn't watch the movie. I watched the two uh, movies, the one with uh, Burt Lancaster and the other one that I <laughs> I prefer to ignore. Yeah. But uh, that's uh, that's a story that uh, that grew on me and. Uh, I was found fascinating mm -hmm. anthropomorphism uh, and uh, were beasts, so the, that's why there's a lot in Titan. I think. Yeah, and since since we've brought up X Men more than once, I'm cur I'm curious if there if there are any if there are any ar any um arcs or any events reg specifically with X Men that come to mind when it comes to when it comes to visualizing that. That take on that take on X Men into Titan effect. There's a few I well, can think of that probably don't qualify. Well, there's one that people won't necessarily see at first, but uh, I'm uh, when I started reading the X Men, I started with the uh, Claremont version mm -hmm. with the international team, you know, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Storm. Mm -hmm. So there was this kind of people coming from different places in the world. And uh, that's at the core of Titan, I think, because people work for an international uh, task force and they come from different nationalities, ethnicities. Uh, they, they have different beliefs. And they're all gathered together uh, fighting against them. So th that's, of course, one of the first references. And after that, of course, is the fact that psychics are like mutants. Mm -hmm. The main difference is that uh, psychic and side effect, the public isn't aware yet of their existence, but uh, there's people who try to control them or destroy them, like in X-Men. Mm -hmm. And given that, I'm, cu I'm curious if anyone's brought up, me brought up, um, men, in brought up men in Black when, dis when discussing Titan effect with you. Surprisingly, no. Then that's uh, that's not one that hasn't been a, an inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, I watched the movie, but uh, that wasn't the kind of feeling that I was looking for. That's also why there's no aliens at all. And uh, of course, there's this kind of secret organization hunting aliens, but you know, it's so over the top and uh, a bit goofy. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the feeling that I was trying to. Uh, to have here. Yeah, I, I can I can certainly um, see that. Um, it's for it's for the same reason that even that even though there might be some some connective tissue on paper, I didn't see um, Overwatch being being list being listed because while you while the while you have that international team ap approach with Overwatch, it's too over the top versus what you intend on doing. Yeah. Yeah, and when uh, when Overwatch was released, I was already well advanced uh, in Titan Effect to be really influenced. By... Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I the think, I started to play the game in fact after uh, I released the the first edition of Titan Effect. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, there are there are some characters that I could that I could see as. As be as being easily able to, easily able to transfer into um, something like Titan Effect, but that's but it's not exactly a large list. It's pe people like Anna, people like Tracer, um, some of the some of the more some of the more high, I was gonna say some of the more high tech, but everybody in that thing is is someone high tech. Even somebody like um, McCree could. Re could reasonably fit as a as a NPC. Yeah. Um, and as far as X Men stories that I I'd hinted that there's a few I can think of that 
probably wouldn't fit the vibe of Titan effect. Oddly enough, it's a lot of the names that it's a lot of the um, arc names that people are going to be familiar with. Days, things like Days of Future Past or Age of Apocalypse or even the Dark Phoenix. All three of them are just a little bit too out there, <laughs> especially the dark. <laughs> I mean, time travel. Maybe if you want to really stretch it, um, something like Apocalypse. Probably not. That it, that's pushing things a little. Um, I know that some uh, some people have made a campaign mixing uh, Savage Rifts and uh, Titan Effect. Which, the mere presence of, psych of Savage Rifts will always make me laugh, given how insistent CM Beta was on not ad adapting his Rift setting into other systems. <laughs> to the point where he tr to the point where he tried he tried to CND people who tried it didn't stop people, and I was still able to find conversions. But, um, Rifts, I've, I've mentioned this in the past, Rifts has been my whipping boy for years, largely because of the mechanics. Well, I won't be able to judge that. I've never played any Palladium games. I think I, I had a friend who, uh, in, in France, it wasn't big, uh, I didn't know a lot of people playing Palladium the game monster once who tried to make me uh, create a character and uh, <laughs> I was just bored by the creation system and I never played a, a Palladium after that I can't say, I can't say that I blame you um, like I, I love Rift's setting but the but the mechanics of the Palladium system, or just the way the books are organized just makes me want to tear my hair out. Because I've mentioned, I've met, given the navigation that you do with your books, I'm pre I'm pretty sure you're ju you're just as familiar with this pro <laughs> with this problem as anyone else. But bad navigation in books is a cardinal sin. Yeah, I uh, strongly agree here. And. Of course, the the other thing, the other entry that I found, I found, I found kind of in, I found kind of interesting that you listed on the video game end of things. First off, there's the beautiful chaos that is Alpha Protocol. <laughs> I like there's the a, <laughs> there's a beautiful gem hidden in broken game. Yeah, and. No, knowing the behind-the-scenes story the way that I do, um, it's a miracle that 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 the game even came out the way that it did. Because it came it came dangerously close to getting shit canned. Because the the way the the, the game mechanics, the combat and seal system is a, is a total mess. But mm -hmm. all the the role playing uh, game experience with the the wheel uh, dialogue uh, menu and the, the way you interact with NPCs is a, is a pure gem, and I I don't think I've ever seen uh, another system that uh, that good. No, especially because you uh, you never knew how to talk to an NPC. Sometimes you had to be nice to obtain what you wanted, and other time you had to be a total jerk for. To have the the total opposite of what you uh, of what you wanted. Yeah, um, Lore Runner has talked about that extensively in some of his work. He calls it the Tor effect, where what you where um what you intended to what you intended to say with a dialogue option and what you actually end up saying don't all don't match up. I think that's the reason why games have dialed back from that dialogue wheel appro approach that was so common in the seventh generation. Yeah, and in games like Mass Effect, it was like, okay, you're playing the good guy or the bad guy. Which... So there was n almost no surprise to, uh, to how it worked, because you knew what you were going to get, uh, depending on uh, how you were playing. I gave Mass Effect a bit of a pass because even even at its st even when it stumbled 
on that in that regard until th until three, but let but we won't talk about that. It was still it was still within the backdrop of of Shepard being a career soldier. Yes. Oh. It's when it's when you're it's when you're making decisions that don't feel like a career soldier in that sense that you have the problem, um. Because because what it should be is the things you is the options are things that you that that character could say, and I think the I think when you try and have a blank slate character, then you ha then you really run into this problem. Like you wouldn't. If you're playing, say, the Wolf Among Us, you're not going to have this problem with the choices with Big B because you know the kind of character that Big B is. That's a, yeah. that's at least my yeah. take. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, something that something that I'm a bit a bit curious a bit curious about is I know you've t I know you've done the you did the whole thing with mission hooks and the like but have you cons have you considered down the road um rele releasing a releasing a full on campaign releasing a full on campaign or even just a um collection of missions oh yes totally in fact that's something that uh, with my friend Daniel we have been uh, trying to do uh Last two years, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we had uh, conflict with our different schedules. Uh, there was also this uh, issue with uh, with the superpowers companion that was supposed to be released, and I had to make uh, a new edition for Titan Effect. Mm -hmm. So uh, all this made the the, the the writing of this campaign more more difficult. But now that the declassified is released, we're, uh, we're having more time to discuss about what we're gonna do uh, about this campaign. But there is definitely a campaign that we will uh, that we will release, mm -hmm. and I'm planning also on writing more adventures. Uh, or I have uh, an idea for uh, an adventure in the four uh, at least three or four chapters. So uh, top something that you can do. Uh, that you can't finish overnight. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, lots of ideas, but it's uh, the time and money that uh, that's always uh, and it's always the issue. Yeah. Um. For, for, I know that the original Titan effect you had you had fun you had um funded through Kickstarter. Are you planning on doing that for a, for a future project? If you go if you go that far. Yeah. Probably. I hesitated to do a Kickstarter for a Declassified, but uh, I didn't do it for uh, health reasons because uh, I was uh, uh, to, to give some context when I wrote uh, when I work on Declassified, I had a burnout. My father passed away, so I had a lot of stuff to to deal during that uh, the last year. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was uh, it was difficult. In fact, uh, working on declassified helped me a lot to to keep my head over the, the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that uh, all this is behind me, I'm gonna have more time and uh, to uh, more time and more in energy to uh, to do a new Kickstarter. Because I remember when I launched the first Kickstarter for Titan Effect. At the uh, one uh, once the campaign was over, I was exhausted for a month because uh, you know I was juggling with a uh, work. I had a, a young child at that moment and dealing with all that, and I was doing everything myself during the campaign. So uh, it's uh, when you do a Kickstarter or any crowdfunding, you must be one hundred percent one hundred percent on that. You can't do anything else because. Uh, you have to talk to people. You have to adjust your campaign if it stalls. Uh, it's a full-time job, really. Mm -hmm. And with that, with that in, with that in mind, I will, 
I will certainly be keeping a close eye on on how things develop. I do remember that there was. I'm not sure. I'm, I've been a bit late to the party on cer on certain things. I do remember there was the whole talk of the bio augmented soldiers rules, which I'm not yes. sure if that um if that had if that had finally gotten finished or if or oh not. that's uh, that's in declassified. It's oh, uh, I guess it's I, an I, option. I guess I must <laughs> have missed it. It's an option now. That's something that has been asked for by a lot of players, mm -hmm. and uh, we included it uh, in the classifier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, 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 I juggle a, I juggle a lot of um, a lot of plates, <laughs> so sometimes things get lost in the shuffle. I I totally get that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Um. At the very least, nobody's nobody's had me spinning plates while saber dance plays because I don't want that or have the <laughs> Benny Hill or have the Benny Hill theme playing. Uh, I would I would I would soon I would sooner put on a Leafs jersey than do that again. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come on to the show and enjoy the madness at play here. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. I just avoid the pain glass. <laughs> no worries, you won't have to deal with the pain glass. And of course, I appreciate it. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs> <laughs>